Hey guys, this is Vadim with Max Tech, and this right here is Apple's brand new 16 inch MacBook Pro. It's actually almost fully spec'd out. We've got the 2.4 gigahertz, eight core i9. We've got 32 gigs of RAM and the highest end AMD 5500M eight gigabyte graphics compared to the top spec 2015 MacBook Pro right here. It's got the top end 2.8 gigahertz quad core i7. It's got 16 gigabytes of RAM and the best AMD graphics that you can get along with the one terabyte SSD that we also get on the other 16 inch MacBook Pro as well. So in this video, we're gonna compare the differences between basically everything between these two machines, including the speakers, the microphones, the display quality bezels, the keyboards, the track pads, all of that stuff we're gonna compare in this video because I know a lot of you out there are holding on to your old 2015 MacBook Pros because you were reluctant to upgrade to the newer design with the Thunderbolt 3 USB-C ports. First things first, we're gonna start comparing the design. Now you guys may have noticed the glowing Apple logo on the back of the MacBook Pro right here. That's what a lot of people are missing. Honestly, it's been so long that I don't really miss the Apple logo anymore, but it is definitely nice to have. Now, one of the reasons why we have that and we don't have it anymore is because Apple tried to make it thinner. So let's close these down and compare the thickness of both of these. So putting them side by side, you can actually tell that the new 16 inch MacBook Pro, even though it's thicker than the 15 inch, it's still thinner than the old 2015 15 inch. And another thing we noticed with this new 16 inch is that it was slightly bigger overall compared to the 15 inch. But what's interesting is that when we stack these on top of each other, they're actually basically identical. So the new 16 inch is just like the size that the old 2015 15 inch used to be. Now, another interesting difference is that the hinge on the 2015 model is actually plastic. But other than that, there isn't really that much of a difference looking at these on the exteriors. Now, the 2015 model is actually a little bit heavier. I believe it's four and a half pounds compared to 4.3 pounds on the 16 inch. So that's nice that it's a little bit lighter. Now let's get into the ports, which is probably the biggest reason why a lot of people stuck with the 2015 instead of upgrading to the newer design with the Thunderbolt 3 ports. So here we've got the two Thunderbolt 2 ports, which aren't really that useful anymore, to be honest, but of course you can connect to displays. You've got USB-A, you've got the MagSafe charger, which is definitely really nice. We don't have that anymore. You've got another USB on this side. You actually get an HDMI display for connecting to external monitors. And of course you get the SD card reader, which is really nice for the photo editors out there. The only downside of these SD card slots is that they only support transfer speeds of up to around 100 megabytes per second, compared to up to around 300 if you get the right adapter for USB-C on these newer MacBook Pros. And of course, with the 16 inch MacBook Pro, you get four Thunderbolt 3 ports, which you can do a lot of things with. There's a lot of adapters out there. Now let's open them up and compare the interior design. So as you guys can see right here, the layout is very, very similar. You've got the speakers on the sides right there. You've got the keyboard, you've got the trackpad, but there are some really big differences here. First of all, the trackpad on the new 16 inch is massive. It's like twice as big as the old one. Now this one was the new force touch trackpad. It was the first year to get the force touch trackpad. So it definitely feels really nice, but you just get so much more space with the newer one. We can see that the hinge on the new one is definitely a little bit more low profile. It doesn't stick out as much right here. And we have that MacBook Pro logo right there. And moving on to the keyboard, the new 16 inch does get the touch bar right here compared to the physical keys on the old model, which definitely are nice. They're really quick and easy to use. I don't really like the touch bar that much, but I am happy that we do get the physical escape key with the 16 inch and the separated touch ID with the power button right here, which is also really nice. And another difference I'm noticing on the keyboard is that the 16 inch has wider keys. They're bigger overall compared to these smaller chiclet style keys right here. And I can also easily see some backlight bleed around the keys themselves on the 2015 model, whereas the 16 inch MacBook Pro and basically everything since 2016 has the nicer underglow that's built into the key. Now let's compare the feel of the keys themselves, right? Going over here on the 2015 model and they definitely have a lot of key travel, which is really nice, but the keyboard does seem kind of loud. It's definitely louder than what I'm used to with these newer MacBook Pros. And the key travel is nice, but it does feel a little bit mushy. Like, I don't know, you just don't get a lot of feedback from this. And moving over to this, 
If you guys haven't seen our 15 inch versus 16 inch MacBook Pro comparison, we did notice a lot more key travel, like a lot more keyboard feel. It feels so much better than the butterfly keys. So overall, I definitely prefer the newer keyboard on the 16 inch MacBook Pro because they did add in some extra key travel and it definitely feels nicer with that extra springiness. Now we also see a massive difference in these displays. First of all, the bezels on the 2015 model are massive. They're so huge compared to the 16 inch model, which recently did get the bezels shrink down a little bit compared to the 15 inch. So it looks a lot nicer, more modern. And comparing these side by side, the difference is just huge in the bezels. I also noticed a huge difference in the color temp of these displays. Now the 2015 model does not have true tone technology, which the 16 inch obviously does. And just looking at it like this right here, the 2015 looks so blue. I'm on Google's website, which is supposed to be nice and white, but it looks super blue compared to the 16 inch, which has like a nice paper white feel to it. And there's also a massive difference in the maximum display brightness. Comparing these side by side, the new 16 inch MacBook Pro is just so much brighter than the old 2015 model. This is gonna help in bright environments, reducing the effect of reflections and stuff like that. It's just gonna be a lot nicer to have that brighter display. Now, before we move on, I wanna mention that the 16 inch MacBook Pro does get better color accuracy. It supports P3 wide color gamut, while the 2015 model does not. And now let's get into something I'm really, really excited for, comparing the speakers. Let's see how far Apple has gotten in four years with speaker quality. Now we know that the 16 inch recently got a huge upgrade in the speakers. They just sound so much better, more clarity, better in every single way, especially bass. So let's compare these two. So I don't know if you guys could tell the difference depending on what kind of speakers you guys are using, but there is a massive difference with the 16 inch. You get better volume, you get better clarity, you get better highs, mids, lows. The separation of all those frequencies as well works very, very well on the 16 inch MacBook Pro. And I can honestly say that anybody doing music production could actually use these speakers for producing music and stuff like that because they're very, very accurate. All the frequencies just sound very good on the 16 inch MacBook Pro. The new 16 inch Pro also gets upgraded studio quality microphone. So let's go ahead and compare a FaceTime video clip on each model. This is a FaceTime video and audio quality test on the 2015 15 inch MacBook Pro. And this is a video and audio quality test on the new 16 inch MacBook Pro. Now let's get into comparing performance, starting off with the classic Geekbench 4 CPU test. So we got our results, and as you guys can see, you're getting almost two times the multi-core score on the new 16-inch MacBook Pro compared to the 2015, which is honestly better than I expected, but for four years, that's actually a pretty decent difference. And now let's get into testing graphics with Geekbench 4's metal test. All right, so we got the graphics scores back, and this is insane. The 16-inch MacBook Pro actually scored 100,000 points in the metal test compared to only 32,600. So that's triple the performance, triple the graphics performance going from the 2015 model to the 2019 16-inch MacBook Pro, which is insane. With that big of a difference in graphics, I'm actually gonna test out Unigen's Heaven Benchmark, the Extreme preset, to see the difference for gaming performance between these two MacBook Pros. The benchmark is finished, and as you guys can see right here, we're getting almost five times the FPS on the new 16-inch model, which is insane. Another big difference, and maybe the reason for that is that this only has two gigabytes of VRAM compared to eight gigabytes of VRAM on the 16 inch model. Now I also wanna test Cinebench R20, which is a more realistic benchmark because it heats up both of the systems, gets the fans going, and shows you more realistic performance, which you would actually see in real use cases. So the test just finished, and as you guys can see from these scores, we're actually getting even more than the two times performance that we saw on Geekbench 4. Now I think that's because the 2015 took so much longer that it got a lot hotter compared to the 16 inch, which finished it 
relatively quickly before it got really hot. And now let's compare storage speeds. Now both of these models are equipped with one terabyte SSDs, so it's an apples to apples comparison. So let's go ahead and run it. Looking at the storage speeds of the 2015 model, they're actually not that bad but the 16-inch MacBook Pro is a lot faster, as you guys can see with those scores right there. Now, what's very interesting is that this 2015 MacBook Pro, four years ago, it was actually priced at $3,200 compared to $3,500 with this specific model right here. Now, the differences are the RAM. First of all, this one has 32 gigs of RAM compared to 16, and this also has the highest end processor, which honestly, we would recommend not going with the 2.4 gig processor, but actually going with a 2.3 gig processor, which saves you $200. And that way, it's actually only a $100 difference between these two. And as you guys saw from all those tests, the keyboards, the speakers, the microphones, the displays, this is just so much better compared to the 2015 model. Now, if you want to see some more in-depth performance testing, specifically in Final Cut Pro 10 for video editing, go over to the Max Yuryev channel and subscribe because he's going to be doing a direct comparison between these two. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this comparison, comparing all this different stuff. If you guys noticed some differences or something that you liked about the 16-inch MacBook Pro, leave a comment down below. And if you haven't already, click that circle above to subscribe and check out those two videos right there. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.